All right, what's up, everybody? Well, we're back in the garage, which should mean only one thing, trailer. No, just kidding. Uh, we're gonna do uh, a little build here. I had my gun, I don't know, I'm sure this is a common problem with everybody, um, but over the years, you know, you're, you're throwing your gun in the back of the truck and it's just kind of laying there. Um, I've tried a bunch of different ways to try and mount it. I've made boxes, um, uh, hook and hook type carriers or whatever. I'm trying to figure something out that's real simple, um, that frees up all unusable space that you can still have your gear and your jackets and the collars and everything in the back seat um, and still have your gun easily available as so you're in and out um, quick. It just seems to be one of those things that you're, you're, you're digging out from underneath stuff and you're trying to keep it protected and uh, it just doesn't work real well when you're out there actually in the field calling. So here is the plan. Okay, so what we've got on the table here is uh, essentially everything we're going to need um, as well as this uh, flat stock here. So we've got a two inch piece of angle iron, um, eighth inch thick, eighth inch thick flat stock, um, two inches wide. Um, what we're gonna do with that is we're gonna marry these two together and make it a single two by four um, piece. We have some washers, some grommets for inside the washers. We have a magnet, the secret ingredient. Um, and then we have some uh, tiny screws that are M-lock. So, and then some flex seal to uh, coat the whole thing and rubberize it. Well, the idea is we're going to utilize the headrest. So you've got these posts here um, under the headrest and I'm gonna take those washers we're going to use those to mount the headrest. We're going to weld the washers to the piece of angle iron. Angle iron is going to sit here like this, and I'm going to make a piece. This is just a scrap piece I had to give you an idea of what we're doing here. But uh, we're going to go all the way across with this, and it'll extend out enough when I actually put my gun in here. Um, you can kind of see, but you need a little bit of clearance for the, for the buttstock just to rest here and then go up you got a little bit of a bump out on the seat here so it has to pop out and make sure that's where that four inches comes in so it'll come out four inches and then down two and then we go back to the actual gun so this is kind of the setup i have this is for my sling the qd mount there for the sling on the opposite side i'm going to mount that magnet that we talked about earlier over here so we're going to stick the magnet. Um, I'm not sure exactly. I'll get the, the height you need. But the magnet's going to sit, sit in one of these M-lock slots. And then hopefully the idea being that all I have to do is set this gun in the truck and magnetizes to that uh, top piece of angle iron. So this magnet has like a 100-pound holding force is what it said. We'll see if that is actually true. So why are we using the Flex Seal? Um, the rubberized coating, I think the weakness of magnets is in that like sliding force. Have you ever seen you put a magnet on anything and you can, you can slide it or move it around a lot easier than you can pull it straight off. So the idea being you need to create some sort of friction there so that it doesn't, it's a lot harder for it to move in any, uh, sliding fashion. So with the coating, I'm hoping that I can get away with it just on the piece of angle iron. If not, I'll have to coat the magnet and then um, I'm hoping that that keeps it from sliding because when it's in the back of the truck I mean you're going down bumps it's gonna have want to slide around so I got this thing mounted but this um, screw the inlock screw it's, it didn't come with this magnet and it sits a little bit proud of the gun there so um, or the magnet there I should say and I tested it, it still works, but because that's the only point in contact with the metal, um, it does have a tendency to, to rotate a little bit, and I'd rather it be locked in as much as possible, especially when you're running down a bumpy road. So take this off, and then I'm gonna run it through the uh, grinder and see if I can get just a little bit off. We'll still have enough thread there, or enough uh, um, on this Allen set in order to get it locked down. So let's do that. All right, that should do. I'll get this thing. Here we go. 
nice and flush should be perfect get this thing uh, painted and uh, continue on and swapped over to some pants and long sleeve for the grinding and welding part of this thing finally uh, a little cooler here in Arizona it's starting to drop to uh, where you can actually get into a long sleeve and pants and not be completely miserable in the garage it's not not ideal I think it's getting up to 80 already 82 it's uh, 11 o'clock so you knock this out quick before I uh, have to be sweating too much out here All right, well, everything turned out pretty pretty slick. Um, not the prettiest welds, they'll do, they'll work. Um, but uh, I did a quick test fit without the grommets, everything's centered, so we should be good. Uh, now we just need to get this thing coated, let it dry, get the grommets in there, mount the magnet, and then see if this thing actually works. So, onward. Presto. Hey, well, check it out. 
the thing is in there and it works. Um, just to get it out, just a stiff grab. Now I did, you can see this finish is starting to come up because it's only been like three, four hours since I put it on there. And uh, it says to be 48, so got a little ahead of ourselves, but um, let's check it out real quick. Let me put this gun down over here. All right, so um, the carpet, I did a rough cut around, not perfect, but it's doing its job. Use some self-adhesive or spray adhesive. Um, and got in there, it's in all the contours, good. Um, turned out pretty nice, you know? It's the underside of a, uh, um, seat so nothing super pretty and then this so it does have some play in it but um you can see these grommets kind of doing their job and keeping that it's not one it's not clanging and two i think it's fine to just be sitting there um as is once i lift it up and put the rifle on there it's locked in place so um i like this i think we're gonna roll with it for um the season see how it goes and uh, we'll check in if it uh, if I need to change anything. But I still have all this room over here for a bag and call and whatever the heck else, jackets and whatnot. Um, so there you go. All right, guys. Well, that's it. Um, I appreciate you guys tuning in for this one. You know, I just wanted to um, try and help somebody else out. You know, I go on in other people's rigs and I see ideas that I can maybe tweak how they store their calls, how they store their guns, whatever it may be. Try and tweak them to my own, because um, that's what it's all about, is, is minimizing that time between stands. When you can um, bring that time down between pulling your gun out and getting the call and getting everything set up. If all you have to do is open the door, grab two or three things, and you're, you're, you're moving to the stand, that's less time you have between stands and more time you have uh, to call coyotes and put them back in the truck, period. So um, hopefully this helps you out. Uh, appreciate you guys tuning in. See you next time.